Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how I've upgraded my existing solar power system in the van. Okay, so I do have an existing video up already showing my original solar panel solar power setup in this van. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check out that video if you haven't already to get an idea of my original system. So in this video, I have some footage from when I installed the second 100 watt solar panel. That second 100 watt solar panel is exactly the same as my original one, the Renogy 100 watt panel. You can get them off Amazon for about 150 bucks, usually with free shipping, so it's a pretty good deal. It's a great high quality panel. I highly recommend them. They've worked out great for me. The second panel that I got, I actually have received as a gift. A very kind and generous uh, viewer subscriber of mine, friend of mine, sent me that solar panel around Christmas as a gift. Extremely grateful. It was a very generous gift. I couldn't believe that he did it, but it has very been very helpful as far as making my system a little bit more effective and providing me with some more power. So I'll show you that footage here on how, how I installed the second panel. Okay, so I've got the, the old panel and the new panel here. I have the connectors I need to wire them together in parallel to keep them at 12 volts but yet raise the amperage and wattage. So instead of being 100 watts, it'll be 200 watts at 12 volts. So what I'm going to do is drill, like I did in my original panel, two more holes on either edge of the new panel. And basically the idea is, is when I set this on here, I should have the two old holes line up like they are here and here. And then I'll make some marks to get two more holes in the new panel. So I'm going to get a marking pin out and a drill and get started on that. Okay, so now I've got the original panel bolted down on both sides. And this one, I'm going to try to get up as flush as possible here <clears throat> so I don't have a gap as to not get any whistling uh, from the wind as I'm driving down the road. So I'm going to squeeze these together really tight, mark a couple holes, and then drill and then bolt that on. Okay, and then the next step is to take the two positive leads and go into one connector. So we're joining our two positives and our two negatives. So these guys will go in there just like this. Two positives. Okay, and then our negatives. Same deal. Negative, negative, right in there. Okay, so they're both all secured. All the clips are in. So now we gotta get this up on the roof. Okay, so I just slid my roof rack, the ladder rack, back here to make a bigger gap. And now I'm just gonna secure it the same way I did, is to a U-bolt here, a U-bolt here, same on the other side. Connect the wires and we'll be good to go. So. We'll take a look at what it looks like. And I was fortunate that these wires here are going to reach my old connector so I won't have to use any extra wire. It's the two panels from up top. Okay, as you saw, it's a pretty easy install. Now, what, having that second panel, what that does for me is it allows me to ensure that my battery bank is getting completely topped off every day. Now, if it's cloudy, I still get a little bit of a trickle charge, actually a pretty good strong trickle charge, even when it's cloudy because of the two panels. When I just had the one, I'd get a very weak trickle charge when it was overcast, and it just wasn't enough to bring my battery levels up because my fridge would be kicking on and off in any other power use that I would use. So having that second panel really ensures that I get a good, solid, complete 100% charge, and it will actually go into float mode for the majority of the day, which starts to 
equalize the batteries and just keeps the batteries as healthy as possible for maximum lifetime. Okay, so now where I run into needing more power is because my battery bank can only hold so much power. Between those two batteries I have, there's only so much power that they can hold. You know, they get topped off by about 10 a.m. in the morning, and they're just basically equalizing and staying charged throughout the day as far as the sun, you know, shining. Now, once the sun goes down, that I no longer am charging, and I'm just using the power, and there's only so much power in those batteries. Now, typically, I will not deplete them th throughout the night with my fridge running on and off, charging my cell phone and stuff like that. Where I run into an issue is using my laptop. Because I make YouTube videos, I do video editing on my laptop, and that's very power intensive as far as the laptop goes. And to top it off, I'm using a very old laptop, which is like a 2006 MacBook, and it does not hold. I've replaced the battery many times. I'm on a fairly new battery now, and the battery life on my laptop, when I'm editing, I only get like 45 minutes of use out of my laptop. So it pretty much has to be plugged in after dark. And where I've run into the problem is, is after about two hours of use, I'll get my battery start to get down to the point to where with my fridge kicking on and off, they're about 50%, which with my type of battery, lead acid battery, you don't really want to go below 50% because that'll really shorten the lifespan of the batteries. So it's best to, once you get down to about 50%, that's really when they need to be charged again. So typically, that works out fine, but with me making videos, if I'm not somewhere where there's like a Starbucks or something where I can go in and hang out and plug in my laptop and do my thing at night, if I'm out here like boondocking like I've been doing a lot lately, I really have a concern with running my batteries down too low. So the, the other the option to resolve that would be to increase my battery bank. I have enough solar that I could increase the battery bank and have more power for when the sun is not around. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't have the space, so what I've done is I've installed a battery isolator to where when I'm driving the van and the van is running, it can actually charge my battery bank. So if at night and I'm camped out somewhere, technically if I'm doing a project on my laptop and my house batteries get low, I can start up the van and complete my project and just let the van idle. Not ideal, you know, it's burning fuel. It's not the best way to go, but I'm looking into other alternatives. One of the things I'm looking at is they're making now a big rechargeable lithium ion battery that you can recharge or power your laptop off of. So if I had one of those, I could charge that up during the day and have that for when the sun goes down and run my laptop off, off of that once my battery bank starts to get kind of to a dangerously low level. So that's kind of the solution that I've come up with for that. Um, Really, you know, it, this whole solar thing, it comes down to individual needs and what you're trying to do with your power. And for me, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do this on a very minimalist level. And I'm just, it really, you know, using solar, it really puts you in check as far as how much power you're using and to not be wasteful with it and to really, you know, get to know how much power you have available to you and you know work within your means so for me it's working out like I said the only drawback now is that I'm not able to use my laptop as much I was as I would like at night I'm looking into newer laptops I know they're a lot more efficient but that's something I won't be able to afford for quite a while and I really want to get just keep using this laptop till it dies and get all the life I can out of it um, that's just the way I roll um, so anyway, I don't want to go on too long. I could go on forever talking about solar. So if you have any questions, you know, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. And I will be doing a video coming soon showing the battery isolator that I talked about, how I installed that, and how it's working out for me. So I hope that was helpful, guys. Hope everyone's doing good out there, and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.